two of our four-part webinar. My name is Cosimo Rafi. I'm taking over for Tom this week to talk about uh, section creation, how to add fields, some section displays, and some other fun tidbits uh, when you're building up the form. And if there's QA at, at the end, I'll answer some of the uh, audience's questions. In week one of the webinar, Tom walked you guys through the form type shell and you know basic navigation, what you're expecting when you're building out the shell of the form type. This week we'll be going over form type sections as well as form type fields. Um, just one thing to note with the basic navigation of it, uh, most of the uh, most of the time it'll go parent into child. So the, the form type would be the parent entity and the form type section would be the child of the form type, right? So when you're navigating, you don't know where you are in the, uh, in the entity. Just if you go one up, you'll eventually make it back to the form type uh, parent entity. So to begin, we have two ways of doing this. We can click related and we can go into form type fields and create a new term form type field, or we can click this little three dots here uh, beside form sections and then click new form type section. Yeah. From there, we're going to name this section basic controls. So all the controls today that you will see, um, they'll be very dynamics uh, friendly, I guess you can say. So created on date, reported date, something that dynamics doesn't really need. Uh, I track four, I guess you could say. From there, we can hide the label if we wanted to. Um, in the actual portal, we can put some instructions when they're clicking onto the um, the form section at the at the front of it or at the end of it and then we can have some columns which i believe sep will separate the uh, form type fields so we keep it all as basic keep it all as standard and click save to create this entity after we click saved we see that the form type fields record showed up um, and then like i said earlier form type section would be the parent and form type field would be the child now what the form type field is, is all, it's all the field options. So whenever you're entering a text box, a risk matrix, a uh, corrective action, whatever it may be, you need to create a field to have that uh, appear on the portal. And then all of these fields will be separated by sections. So to begin with that, we'll click new form type field here on this entity record. As we can see here, some things will auto fill up. We see the form type. It says no name now, but once you click save, it will default back to our form type name of test. And these are actually all hyperlinks. So if I were to control click here, we see here that it will actually open up the form type of test. So if you do get lost trying to make the form type fields, this will take you back. Same with the form type section. Now let's say you clicked new form type field in the wrong section. You can actually clear out the section and then add a new one. So um, field option, what a field option is, this is what the form type field does. So we have a bunch of options once you click it down, a drop up, uh, a drop down menu will open. So we're going to go over four form type field options. We'll be dis discussing accounts. We'll be discussing some of the user defined ones and user defined date time and user defined text boxes. And then we're going to be going into a little bit of the yes, no and a bit of the section displays there. So to begin, we'll start with account one. And we see here that at the very bottom, it adds some of some extra options because of the account. So whichever field option you choose, you'll get a bit of accounts. You'll get a, whatever field option you'll choose, you'll get a bit of uh, variation with the options you have. So unique reference, this is mainly comes with reporting, or if you're looking through your SQL database or your OData database, You'll, you know, if I call this accounts unique reference, I, there will be that one column that anything relating to accounts, it will show this little account key there. Um, whether it's required or not, when a user is filling out the form, is this field required? Will they need to show the title? Is it a read only? So let's say you're making it created on date time. You don't want them to change that, so you click yes. If you want to display it for a specific team only, you can you know, set that standard as well. Do you want it to show on the report when you're going into PDF or when you're going into uh, the edit page, do you actually want it to show at all, right? So most of the time you'll keep, th keep this as show. Are there any document items related to this field option? Um, for instructions, are there any instructions you want under to you know, help cl clarify which accounts to put? 
So for example, we can say um, account that is the main, the main contractor, which tells the employee who's filling out the form that the only account you should be putting into here is the main contractor. For the instructions, if you want them to only show on the edit page, you can. If you want them to show onto the print pages as well, you're able to, or all. So it really shows how important the instructions are, uh, depend, mainly on the incidents, you want to keep this as all. And then the instructions icon, I'll click yes, just to show you what it looks like, but it's this little blue um, exclamation point that you can click to actually hide and show the instructions. For width, so the accounts, actually just, I'll quickly save it and I'll show you guys what it looks like right now. If I just refresh it. So we see here that the account one is put on and this little blue eye is here. So if I click, I can show and hide the instructions. And we see that the line of the account is actually the full length of the page, which is showing here, width is equal to line. But if I do it into half line or 300 pixels and I click save again, and then I refresh the page, that will actually um, change the size of the field option in case you want to have many columns going throughout the portal. Cool. Uh, do you want it to auto save? So after they make a change to the account field, um, should they save the, uh, the entire form? Most of the time this is set to no, unless it's a long inspection or a long risk matrix to fill out. Um, for default field, you can default it from other um, business units, other users. So if you know user, the user is filling it out, is linked to this account, you can actually default the account to that uh, particular user's account. So you don't really have to go and fill it out every time if they're linked to the ad account. Um, for quick view, this will be um, a specific way to view the account. So right now if I open it up, we see here that it's going to pull up every single uh, account in our system. However, if I show quick view, um, what this does is this adds a second um, eye icon, like the instructions icon, that you can either show on the edit form, show on the report once it's completed, or on both. And if you go down here to the quick view form and select one of these, it will actually uh, bring up more information about that account specifically. So what this will do is, we see here it goes account one is equal to ABC Company East. If I click the little eye icon, it shows you a bit about the account itself. You can actually hide and show this uh, information as well. So for allow add, what this means is it looks at the field option, whether it be a contact or an employee or an account, and it tells you, okay, can we add another account straight off of the portal? If we click yes, we'll actually have the option to say which quick create form you want to do from. So you actually create um, some new create forms. We have the default one as account quick create. If I click save here, go over to the test and open up the accounts um, field option. We see how this little new button pops up. If I click new, I'm actually able to you know insert some information about the account. So if I call it test accounts, and everything else can be blank. Click save and close. It actually now saves in Dynamics and we have it here as well. Cool. Lastly, we have this view button. Um, this simple select, simple search, select by relationship type, all accounts. So whether you create a system view and we have these four default ones you can choose from the iTrack portal, uh, you, actually sell, you can actually filter out the accounts shown on the form type. The best one that we have is the simple search one because what it does, if we click it now, we see that they all list out without any real filters. However, if I click refresh, because we saved the form type, we see now we have, we can filter by uh, what type of account it is, and we can actually t filter out by the title of the uh, form as well. Cool. So for the rest of the form type fields, we're just going to go over them quicker because a lot of these options are the same. I'm just going to discuss how they work in the portal more so than they work in Dynamics. So I'll click Save here, and I'll click Create New. And then we see here that the form type field, okay, I'll go back, reset this. 
So for the next couple of form type field um, options, we're not going to be going over a lot of these options in detail because they are very similar, um, if not identical. And we'll just be going over how they relate to portal and how they actually operate um, on the front end. So to create a new form type field, we're going to want to go back into the form type section of basic controls by clicking this hyperlink here and then clicking form type field on the right side like last time. For the next example, we're going to be talking about a user defined um, date and time. All right, we're going to call this date time and then go over some of the options we have. So we can keep it as read only if we wanted to. Um, the only thing with this is data has to be auto populated. So let's say we change default to current date time to yes and then uh, read only to yes and click save. And then if I refresh this bad boy, we see here that we actually can't edit it and 23rd of September at 2.17 is locked in place. There's nothing we can do to change this. Um, and then you do, you don't want to call this the created on date time or the reported date time, whatever you want to do with your HSC uh, metrics and then auto save as, as always. So that's sort of how date and time works. If I click read only, I'll show you guys how you would regularly input um, the date and time into a form. So we have two options here. Once we click this little calendar icon, it'll open up a calendar and we can select any day, any year, um, any decade if we want to, right? Very simply. And then if we click this little clock icon, we can write what time it occurred. And let's say it occurred at 2.35, you just hover over, delete an option and add it there. So very simple date and time um, option. The next form type field we're going to be talking about is the user defined text box, which again is very simple. With very simple options as well. Uh, the only difference being, um, let's say you have a template like um, an incident report that they should be filling out has everything else written out for you or an audit review that everything, has everything else written for you. You just need to change a couple of words here and there. You can actually fill this out and it will pre-fill the text box. You can add how many rows you want it to default to. So similar to the way the width is aligned, how big do you want this to be? Um, and then formatting, let's say if it's like I said, social insurance number, social security number, how do you want them to write the text box? You can get those options as well. All right. Um, so for those, quickly save. Go back into the form type. So we see here that the text box is one row long the entire way across the screen. The only problem with this now being is if I have a long sentence, right, like the brown. Fence, for example, you actually can't add a new row unless we change that back into uh, the form type field options over here. So if I change this row to 10, I could add 10 lines um, of text. The other thing we want to talk about here is this um, show rich, rich text editor. If I click this to yes, hit save and refresh the form type. So we see it changes the entire format of the text box field. And this is really meant for those, you know, long essays, those long audits, those long incident reports that you need to make sure everything was written in detail. Uh, you know, we can change the, the heading of a section. We change those bolds, italics, uh, underline the section of everything. It really gives that word feeling um, to the text box. And as you're writing, the brown dog jumped over the fence. Right, we see here that it actually will change in real time. I'm going to bold something and so on. And then when you save it, this little text box editor will disappear and it will just save that text um, into the text box for the reporting. Cool. And then finally, the last form type field that I do want to talk about is the yes, no um, form type field. So we're going to call this yes, no one. No unique reference. As you can see, nothing, no options really showed up because it's such a basic form type field. 
We're going to click save. And now we see here that section displays will show up. Now, um, during the entirety of our demonstration, this section display test has been up here. Um, just, you know, minding its own business. We see here that the form type section is called section display test. The form type field is called section display tutorial. And finally, the instructions say, congrats, you have successfully set up a section display. Now, however, this wasn't hidden like we were meant it to be because this yes, no field did not exist. So once you go into the yes, no field, we see this little section display entity um, open up. And if we click new section display, it opens us to a new page. Then we can say, if it goes to yes, show the section display tutorial. Click save. And then another record shows up. We click add existing form type section. So we see here that the sections to display record will show up. If we click add form type section here on the ribbon, we can look for section display tutorial or test. Click yes, hit add. And now it shows up here. Click save just in case. Go back to test. Refresh the entire form type. We see here that that section display test section actually disappears. And if you go down to this yes no drop down, click yes, that the section display test um, section will now appear. If we change it to no, it'll actually disappear. So it's pretty responsive in that sense. You can do a lot with this control. You can do a lot with these section displays to really you know add a little bit of pizzazz to your form types so those are all the basic controls you want to talk over today um, obviously we're just scratching the tip of the iceberg um, i'll give you guys a little bit of insight to some of the other um, form type fields we have in the system that might that will get into the future webinars such as risk severity spills releases would you actually track how much of gas or liquid has been released. Um, we have equipment usage, equipment inspections, JHAs, SHA, uh, JSAs, JHAs, inspections, item lists, links, signatures, and a whole lot more, uh, which we will go over in the upcoming weeks. Thank you for attending this week's webinar. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks.